My view of a prevenient grace is that it's God's presence throughout all of reality from the most complex to the least complex creatures. God's presence that invites, calls, commands, provides the capacity for creatures to exist and to respond to God. So for me, prevenient grace is present throughout all creation, not just to humans, but to other creatures as well. Uh, but it's never coercive. It's never controlling. It's always an invitation to uh, the best given what's possible. I think the more loving you are, the more options you have for freedom. I think people who are addicted to sin have fewer options. So um, the more love loving you are, the more options you have. However, simultaneously, because a person might continually choose loving options time and time and time again, they develop a kind of habit. You know, in my tradition, we call it Christ-like character. They, they produce, they become these kind of people that although they have all kinds of options before them, they have a kind of momentum, a history, a groove, the love groove, <laughs> maybe we can call it. And because of that, the more they stay in that groove, the less likely they are to choose any sinful options. But being in that groove doesn't mean that uh, freedom is somehow limited to one right thing moment by moment. I think it's the opposite. When I wake up in the morning today, uh, because I'm not addicted to some of the things I was addicted to in the past, I think to myself, I've got a ton of ways I might love today. Like, I don't think there's one just thing that's been predetermined for me to do. I think to myself, man, I've got all kinds of loving options on the table. And I think that's the way we should look at uh, this life and the afterlife as people are in this have this new phrase I've invented, the love groove, <laughs> that they have characters or habits, uh, maturity that incline themselves to repeatedly choose love options.